and that's not even though that's suboptimal conditions. So. It just kind of run on six volts. Yeah, now they do run on six volts. Speed 3.3 volt. That's probably five volts. It might switch it up. And that's it. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to have do some fun stuff. <laughs> we'll get a little demos going here. Uh, I think first we'll go ahead and bring up um, the phones. What if you had an old seven foot C band? Oh, <laughs> 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 well, Bill's hired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even a KU band in tennis, <laughs> pretty good size. Okay, this this is actually connected. I'm connected to this node here right now, okay, over E1. Um, and this is the main, uh, the home screen that you'll see first when you bring up the router once you've uh, put in your call and all that. Um, to do that, you come over to setup. And here's the setup uh, screen so you can uh, and again, you'll see that the SSID is broadband ham net. Uh, you can't see the V1, but it's out there. Um, the node name, again, that node name can change. That node name can be, you know, KA8, your call, and dash whatever you want it to be. Um, there's really not too much else you have to change. As long as the SSID is right and you put a node name in, um, everything else. And again, there's the, the settings for the uh, antennas. This one's set for diversity mode. Um, and of course, you've got all your LAN stuff too. You can set up your DHCP server on your LAN. Did you get that? <laughs> and now I'm going to uh, bring up the mesh status. And this is going to show me all the mesh nodes that it currently sees out there. So we've got a lot of nodes out there. We've got NAPZL's got a couple and EZT's got a couple. Um, on my node, uh, the services that you see, the services are what actually are broadcast services that are available on that node. So you can go out to a node and you can see, you know, okay, that node's running like this. My node's running asterisk. It's got two VOIP phones available. Um, and then uh, Frank's, uh, that is, the, is unit two the uh, file so service? is actually the one. I, I had a little oops here earlier, and yours, I don't know why it doesn't oh. refresh. Okay. Three is the one running my Pi. Three is the one And that's running a, a patchy okay. uh, with a picture on it. Okay. So let's just uh, connect here to his, his node real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it works. That's out in my truck okay. in the parking yeah. lot. So there you go. That's how fast the mesh nodes are. So that's talking to his truck in the parking lot. <laughs> nice. <that picture. laughs> We're doing mission all. <laughs> <laughs> a different band. They're basically what? Yeah, Close to speed. Yep. Speed. 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 54 uh, megabits per second. So uh, again, I have a voice over IP phone system. I've got a Raspberry Pi running asterisk. That's uh, showing. In fact, I can bring up the Astros server by just clicking on this. Wow. Okay. Free PBX. That's on Pi. <coughs> yeah, that's running on Pi. And there's the uh, status on the Astros server, so you can see. Right now, it's seeing two IP phones online. So it's seeing this IP phone here. It's seeing the IP phone that's connected to that node over there on the table. So let's give it a call. Hey, G, you pick that up? <laughs> yep. I vote. Yeah, there's a speaker I phone button. If you hit the speaker phone button, I call it. Hey, Dr. Grover, you can do it. There you go. Hello, this is NAPZL. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it. So I wonder how much uh, echo we'll have. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of close. So they're going to echo. Cross talk. Yeah, cross talk. Yeah, cross talk. Echo. echo. <laughs>
<laughs> that gets old pretty quickly, doesn't it? So, for, so like, for instance, where, if you're where, at... Um... Where's the applause? <laughs> Jeez. What a captive audience. <laughs> this is great. They're just stunned. They're know, stunned, just... yeah. They're stunned beyond words. Uh, so, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's a phone system. Basically, everyone knows how to use a telephone. So let's say, you know, you had an event, um, maybe like field day, and you wanted to have all your field day, uh, you know, sites connected via phone. You could very easily set up a voice over IP phone system so you could call your, you know, guys in your 40 meter HF trailer and, uh, and uh, with the Pi, the, uh, the Pi running asterisk, from what I understand, it will handle up to 10 simultaneous phone connections, so you can actually have a conference call with 10 people before the uh, audio starts to degradate on it a little bit. But, uh, actually, out of curiosity, can you make a phone call again and see the uh, difference in use of the sure. like, CPUs that you can make? Sure, absolutely. Just have to, like, trick around. Answer it? I'll forget it this time. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> This is an APZ like <laughs> I think it's a prank call, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how's your yeah, so yeah, the CPU the CPU didn't even budge. Is that real? Just refresh the page real quick. So yeah, your CPU then have to like refresh. I think you call her right now. Yeah, it has caller ID. Sorry, mm -hmm. it actually says you know K A eight O A D two is calling. Oh, yeah. So I can call myself. And it says K A eight O A D K A eight O A D two is calling. Hmm. Pick it back up. Are you guys on the do not call? Now if you want, you can uplink your own unmodified router to one of these routers and then everyone can connect Wi-Fi into the ham net. What's interesting is the feedback proves that the uh, speed of transfer between the two nodes is very fast. So now I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to bring up the Pi, and I'm going to go back to the mesh screen here. Just close this out. Yeah. So if you want a bunch of cordless phones in the house, Oops, just put a mesh network in each phone. And do something like that. That's all right. Back in here. Just buy it over. So I was thinking, like, I have one of those systems where there are like four of them all the time. Yeah. I didn't do it. So it won't work around the world. <laughs> or around the country. Okay, so I have the status backed up. I'm going to put this on auto refresh. I'm going to turn the pie on over here. And this is, uh, this is all battery operated. The, uh, the, the uh, camera's 12 volt, the Pi is running off a 5 volt converter off a 12. Um, and what we should see, what you should see when I first turn this on, once it comes up, you should see a, the IP address pop up for a few seconds. And it's going to show you the IP address and then it's going to show you the node name once the IP address, once it refreshes with the, uh, with the IP address here. Is this another mesh node that will appear or just a service? This is another mesh node that will appear. So the whole thing is using TCP IP. Yeah. Right. Um, I know. You can, you can, you can, you can, can use TCP IP, but the OSLR is a mesh network. It's, it's a lower level. It doesn't, it doesn't okay. matter if you could use IPX. Uh, you could use TCP IP. Right. You could even use Apple Talk if you want. Really that, you know. It's going to take just a couple minutes for the Pi to, to boot up here. But. Well, we're running TCP IP yeah, yeah, over the OSLR. Yeah, because yeah, OSLR is just basically the undermining mesh right. part. Right. Uh, it ignores it. It's a lower level, so it ignores mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know, right. It's, 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 yeah, now, yeah. It's now, it's now it's blinking. Yeah, it's there you go. Okay, so we should see the I, uh, the uh, IP address come up here shortly. It's it, uh, there it is. Okay, so there's the IP address, and ten one forty four is the the, the network. IP that they use for the wire, the mesh. And eventually, that'll come up with uh, 
Does that be got to configure, I assume, when you join the map? That's what I want to say. Is there a server on each node? You can have one on each node, sure. You had it when a new node has a number. Yes, but not the same IP address. Where's the OSL? Well, the IP address for the mesh, for the wireless, is actually derived from the MAC address of the device. Okay, so it's hashed. Yeah. Yeah, they use hey, Ken? Yeah. Uh, the IP address went away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now it's, well, so now the node name is up there. Oh, so okay. Now, so now we have KA8OED3 up there. Oh, no, uh, that's the three? Yeah, I go to that. Pretty pretty easy to have a firmware resource. Oh, okay. What's that? No. Okay, now you'll see, this is a little bit different screen than you saw with the uh, Cisco router because this is the HSMM5 screen. So this is what the, uh, the, the uh, Raspberry Pi is running. And you can see there's a bunch of services that are on there. Um, I'm going to hit the camera service. No, oh, it's go. G on the camera. What? <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna feed that. So there's the, uh, the camera. This everybody is, smile. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Eventually, somebody's gonna write. Somebody's gonna write software and put on a PC on a laptop to turn it into a into a mesh node. Yeah, I mean, be able to do that. We're good on something. for the most part, but I mean, it, right now, most of the mesh routing protocols are all Linux. So OSLR, right. um, well, Batman, so laptops run Linux. Plus, yeah, I'm saying like if you want to run it on a like, Windows PC, you can actually right. Well, no, you'd have to kind of dedicate the PC to. Yeah, I mean you could use a like a. But you could use an old laptop running Linux yeah. and make cool. it actually into a mesh node. Right. Possibly, I mean I don't know if it's done yet. The problem wrong. is that embedded software needs to know exactly what hardware it's talking to, and there's too many varieties of. There's some pretty standard. There's pretty standard chipsets. Yeah, but this. You but know, I mean, yeah. The actual mesh uh, protocol does not matter about the actual hardware, as long as you get the mesh protocol on top of your your network uh, driver, it, it doesn't matter. So if you're running a Rylink, um, a, you know, a uh, Theros or whatever, it really doesn't matter by any means. You know what you're actually using for the chipset, as long as you can get LSLR actually as a a Linux device, and you can do that. That's like I said on the Raspberry Pi. I've used several Frank. white wireless. What's the name of that service again? That service is uh, KA8OAD-2. Oh no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Dash three. Dot. Are you connected over here. Dot local. Dot mesh. Nice. Eighty-one fifty. How many? Local, how many? Dot local. Dot mesh. Mesh. Yeah. How many? Uh, Access how many APs are on the mesh right now? Right yeah. now we've got. What was the rest he of just it? connected too? Yeah. Not yeah. yet. What was the rest of it? <laughs> Not mesh. What sir? What sir? Uh, uh, colon uh, port. Eighty-one fifty. Eighty-one fifty. Yeah. Is there uh, slash? ID? Yeah. It's, uh, when you get to the main screen, you just admin admin. Okay. Do another secret one. Yeah. yeah oh, another yeah. secret password. Is that is that a camera? Or is it no. not? It's a sharks. Sharks. S H A R X. Just a standard with a built-in web browser, with a built-in web server. Yeah. It's a standard camera with a built-in web server. It's pretty fast. Well, on the mesh network, it's pretty fast. The <laughs> images. And, and you know, I, I actually went through the menu from my node to get to the other node to get to the service. You don't have to do that. If you know the address, that's what Frank was asking me. You know, if you know the address of the device, you can go directly to that. How would you just you know. put the address in? Oh, right. Yeah, you just put the address. So in there's a DNS the server running. There's right. DNS built into the thing that uses the. Exactly. Nice. So it's a nice step running there. <laughs> there's the audio that's coming out of the <laughs> out of the camera too. The camera has a mic in it, so I have to get full audio stream out of the camera too. That's really feedback. Yeah, a little bit of feedback back there. Talk 
Yeah. 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 Uh, don't talk to it. Don't talk to the camera. This is the camera. Hello? Uh, a little delay there. Yeah, it's a little, a little bit delay. delay. Yeah. <laughs> You're basically taking the audio to a web server, sending it through yeah. TCP IP, sending it through another mesh network. <laughs> yeah. TCP relaying that to TCP IP into right. the computer, exactly. which is also relaying yeah. that to TCP IP. So you got a little bit of battery. battery. Yeah, How much will I be getting on that battery? It, it was used battery when I got yeah. the machine. And of course, I can go ahead. Oh, I was going to show you. Um, let me run back here. Yeah, my laptop battery. Um, I can go in. Uh, let me. I'm going to go back to that node, and I'm going to bring up the. Uh, I'm actually going to log into this node. Think. I'm oh, successful. Carry on. Okay, so now I can go into the admin and see. I can actually admin this node through the mesh network. I can do, go in and change, you know, uh, anything I want to in this node through through the the network through the the mesh network. Then you can turn that off if you want. Um. Uh, if you want to. You, well, it's password protected. So. Right. Well, I mean, you can do that with a right. My router's a stock router lets you do that via broadband. It's just those. It's usually turned off for security reasons. I, I don't know if it can be turned off or not. That, I'm not sure. Turn off. I don't know. Turn off. Uh, uh, remote uh, admin access. Remote admin. Uh, I mean, it's it's running probably just like an open R WRT base. So you could actually kill the web server and just do SSH only if you wanted to do that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You yeah, so that's you know, that's the uh, that's the HSMM Pi. Uh, I I've tried the uh, HSMM Mesh for the uh, lit, uh, for the uh, Raspberry Pi, but it doesn't it doesn't connect well, and I'm, I think it's because the HSMM Mesh for the Pi was written back in the 4.3 days of the HSM Mesh stuff, and the OLSR routines have changed with the new version. So I think if I had an old version of the software on my routers, I'd probably be okay. But with the newer version of the software, it doesn't talk well with the... And the Pi just hasn't been updated yet. Right, and it hasn't been updated yet. The, uh, that, the HSMM Pi, or the HSMM Mesh for the Pi has not been updated recently. Uh, he's, the person that wrote it says he's updating it sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's time frame, yeah, it's open source. So. <laughs> but, cool. So. Yeah. <laughs> now they talk a lot about the uh, Linksys uh, WRT54Gs. Has anybody ever tried any other Broadcom-based uh, routers and see if they can do that on those? that I'm aware of. I could give you a cheap Roswell router that we could do that with. <laughs> give it a try if you want. Got an uh, Asus router. So, I mean, all of these Linksys routers are identical. Yeah, like, you, uh, it's, right. you ever hear like tomato firmware or stuff like that, where they'll work across the board? They're they're all using the same exact Broadcom chipset. It's just basically who slapped on the different breadboard. It comes is down DWRT to it. DWRT the same way? Is that the same? Uh, yeah, DWRT is based off of OpenWRT. The original ones were, what, seven? or something like that, it's some weird, but they're all, pretty much everyone's based off of OpenWRT, except for Tomato is the only one that's different. But um, their, their software for like OpenWRT, they support all types of uh, chipsets. But a lot of them, when they build them, like this one, I would assume it's Broadcom only. They only build the drivers with Broadcom support, so it's just gonna be a lower uh, size on them. But if they support Broadcom, then you can probably slap it on any type of like, Roswell routers on Newegg, they're like 20 bucks, and they have the same exact Broadcom chipset that are in the uh, Linksys routers. So you can probably buy those for like 20 bucks brand new and flash them with that firmware. Does, do you, do the, does the Ubiquiti have any kind of... Um... Ubiquiti is mostly a Theros. Yeah, Atheros or however you can... But, yeah, well, you're probably yeah, saying it right. I only use it off the internet. Yeah, it's an ARM processor. No, it's, it's still uh, MIPS. Well, yeah. It's there, like the documentation, I... No, I mean most of them are in, in that radio. That one is a, yeah. well, I don't know. 
Every one I've seen so far are MIPS. They might have some newer ones, but I thought they were mostly uh, MIPS. Yeah, it says the processor. Um, that was off their own website. Okay. Which is dash two. What, what, what's that? What's the model of that one? What's it called? That uh. Uh, yeah, because um, I know they're like bullet, um, well, that's, no, that's station. Bullet. That's a, uh, the bullet's a lot bigger, but the 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 station. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, all models the ubiquity. I don't know what processor. No, no model it is. Uh, oh, it's uh, just look on ubiquity's website. Uh, Twenty-four. Minutes. Yeah, there's not it's, many uh, ones that support ARM processors. The only yeah, ones that I've seen are like uh, the Xscale IPX MP3. processors. And I forget the, the, uh, Here's the Ubiquity. That's a uh, AirGrid. Oh, AirGrid. Yeah. That's newer. I, don't, I mean, yeah. I assume they're still using Ethereum MIPS, but it might be something um, different. I know the Nanostation. Yeah, they, they might have a one. <coughs> NanoBridge. Those, <coughs> those are all... Uh, um, have, next processor, Ethereos. Let's see. I actually, if, do we have enough time for another short video? I have a real quick video a guy uh, shows his ubiquity stuff if anybody wants to see it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't built a, we're just, we're ex you guys are just experimenting with it right now. You haven't put up any of the permanent. No, we haven't. But you plan to? We plan on it. <laughs> Once you can find some spots to yeah. put it up, put up exactly. the, That's what we're learning right now yeah. is, is what gets in the way. And yeah, right. Summit County is pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Much I, I prefer the ubiquity line of products for HSMM. On the left, I've got a 5 gigahertz nano bridge antenna, 22 dB antenna. Uh, next to that, I have a, I believe it's uh, between 10 and 13 dB, I gain 5 gigahertz Omni. I've got a 2.4 gigahertz Omni, a TP link, uh, which is 15 decibels, a Ubiquity 2.4 gigahertz bullet, and a Ubiquity 2.4 gigahertz air grid. Uh, so I'll show you 5.8 gigahertz gear here. This is an all a self contained unit. You've got the reflective dish, the radio modem module here, modem bracket, and feed through for the Cat5 cable. Uh, these simply pop out. This is the radio module on here. And on it, it comes with four LEDs. First four are signal. Then you've got a data LAN connectivity there, blink, and power. Uh, so the stronger signal, the more of these that will actually light up. The next thing about the ubiquity gear is there's no coax. It's just a standard Cat5 Ethernet connection on it. And uh, that little holder is for the reset button. So all you do is run Cat5 up through the uh, through the hole in here after it's mounted, pop it in there, run a shielded gun cable, push that in, it locks in place, and there you go. It's all weather tight, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, then we've got the 5.8 gigahertz Omni, uh, and then that works the same just as this 2.4, just a different band. Uh, this is the model of the 2.4 that I prefer to use for my tower sites. It's a 15 dBi gain antenna. And then we've got the ubiquity bullet. The nice thing about the bullets here is that when you unscrew it here, you'll notice it's a standard N-mail 